I'm Don Slack. You're listening to KEXP, and I'm very honored to have in the studio with me today Steve Earle. Uh, Steve just recently released last Friday his uh, new album, Guy, a tribute to one of his main songwriting inspirations, Guy Clark. And I'm sure we'll be talking quite a bit about that today. But thank you very much for coming by the studio today, Steve. Uh, oh, thank you for having me. I uh, love having you by here. We're very honored to have you here. Uh, I'll have you start with a couple of songs, then we'll chat a little bit. Okay, that's probably usually better than I play before I open my mouth. Wish I was in Austin in the chiller parlor bar, drinking mad dog margaritas in that can we are. Here I am in Dublin, just rolling cigarettes, holding back and choking back shakes with every breath. So forgive me all my anger, forgive me all my faults Ain't no need to forgive me for thinking what I thought I loved you from the get-go, I loved you till I die I love you on the Spanish steps of day you say goodbye Face up to the truth I'll walk away from trouble But I can't walk away from you So forgive me all my anger Forgive me all my faults Ain't no need to forgive me For thinking what I thought I love you from the get-go I love you till I die I love you on the Spanish steps of day You say goodbye KEXP. So this, uh, I knew Guy a long time, but I knew a lot of his songs before I ever met him. Even before he started making records, just Jerry Jeff Walker recorded several. This was the, kind of the first song that he wrote after, after I got there that I remember being around when it, when it came about. Fight on the porch, stared into the sun. Relive the days, living by the gun. A deadly 
the games of pride were played And living was mistakes not made And the thought of the smell of the black powder smoke And the stand in the street at the turn of a joke Ah, the smell of the black powder smoke And the stand in the street at the turn of a joke It's always keep your back to the sun You can almost feel the weight of the gun It's faster than snakes or the blink of an eye And it's a time for all slow men to die His eyes get squinty and his fingers twitch And he empties a gun at the son of a bitch And he's hit by the smell of the black powder smoke And the stand in the street at the turn of a joke Oh, the smell of the black powder smoke And the stand in the street at the turn of a joke Now the burn of the bullet is only a scar He's back in his chair in front of the bar The streets are empty and the blood's all dried And the dead are dust and the whisk is inside So buy him a drink and lend him an ear Cause he's nobody's fool and the only one here Who remembers the smell of the black powder smoke And the stand in the street at the turn of the joke Ah, oh, the smell of the black powder smoke And the stand in the street at the turn of the joke I stood in that street before it was paved I learned shoot or be shot before I could shave And I did it all for the money and fame No more was nothing but knowing no shame and Nothing was sacred except staying alive And all that I learned from a cold 45 Was to curse the smell of the black powder smoke And the stand in the street at the turn of the joke Curse the smell of the black powder smoke And the stand in the street at the turn Just an old man now, nobody believes Says he's a gunfighter, the last of the breed There's ghosts in the street, they're seeking revenge And they're calling him out to the lunatic friends He's out in the street and he's checking the sun And he's killed by a car as it goes for his gun So much for the smell of the black powder smoke But stand in the street at the turn of a joke so much for the smell of the black powder smoke and the stand in the street at the turn of the door. Ninety point three FM KEXP Steve Earle here in the KEXP studio. Guy Clark song, The Last Gunfighter Ballad. That was just great. Thank you very much again, Steve, for coming by today. Uh, the new album sounds wonderful, by the way. Thank you. Really We're pretty proud it. of it. I um my band's probably still a little mad at me because we made it in five days and there's 16 songs and we rehearsed on on um, sound checks. You know, we're, in fact, we, I think we were through here. And so we did a Copperhead Road 30th anniversary tour and when we were um, on sound check for the last, you know, month or so of that, we just rehearsed these songs so that we pretty much had them down when we went in the studio because we knew we had a lot to record in a very short... We made it in five days, 16 sides in five days, no overdubs. All the vocals are live. All the all the um, solos are live, and then you know, guitar players and fiddle players and soloists in general don't like not to have another crack at a solo. So they're, um, they're I think they're still mad at me. About yeah, that, well, it still sounds great. It turned out pretty good. Yeah, I don't think they really should have too many complaints. The way it sounds, yeah. it's a wonderful sounding record. Um, now you made this record. I guess it's been quite a while since you made your. Uh, Tribute album to your other main songwriting inspiration, Towns Van Zandt. I think was that 2007, exa- I think 2009? 10 years exactly, yeah. Oh, 10 yeah. years ago. So why did you decide to do one to Guy now? Well, I mean, I made the Towns record. Um, Guy was still alive. And, and um, you know, I knew when, when Guy passed away that I would have to make this record. I think I probably even thought about it before that. Cause, and basically... I do not want to run into Guy on the other side having made the Towns record and not made his, so I knew I was going to have to make it. I'm not even sure I believe in that. I mean, I believe in God, but but um, I don't know anybody took real lysergic acid, diethylamide 25, that doesn't. But it it was just, you know, a hereafter, that's open to discussion for me, but I'm not willing to take a chance on that when it comes to that confrontation. <laughs> when it gets right down to, it could be pretty pretty severe no and uh, if, if he was displeased with something, so I don't want to... Um, so I'm, I decided that I had to make the guy record. I made it now largely because making this record now means that this other record that I'm writing, uh, my own songs, can come out in 2020, which is a way more political record. And I want it to come out in 2020 for some reason. 
Yeah, yeah. Imagine that. I wonder yeah, why yeah. that year would be a good year to come out with a good political record. We'll talk about that in a little bit, too. Um, you basically met Guy when you were still a kid. I was 19. Uh, I mean, I knew Towns. I met Towns when I was 17. And I banged around Texas for a couple of years, and then I finally figured out that Austin was probably less than a serious environment, if I, for me especially. So, um, And Guy by that time was in... Nashville, and I knew that, and so just like I went to Houston looking for Towns Van Zandt, I went to I went to Nashville looking for Guy Clark, and you found him. Oh yeah, a yeah. um, friend of mine, Richard Dobson, who's no longer with us, a great songwriter in his own right, was tending bar in a place called Bishop's Pub, and I'd been around for you know several weeks, maybe even a couple of months, and Guy had and Susanna had moved out to the country by the time I got to town, so you didn't see him quite as much, and. I walked in one night just to sign up to do a set and pass the hat, which is what you did. It was basically a basket house. And, um, and Richard said, saw me come to the door. He said, guy's in the back. So I went straight back, and I had this cowboy hat nobody would have recognized me without and had it kind of pulled down over my eyes. And I sort of sat back in the corner, he and Susanna, and I think Jim Stafford and Deborah Allen back there shooting pool. And he was lining up a shot, and he like kind of looked up through his eyebrows and noticed me in the corner, and he said... Nice hat. And that's what started the conversation and found out I knew Towns. And then I started getting invited to stuff. And, and uh, it was the beginning of a real live old world style apprenticeship. He liked my songs and he championed them. He helped me get my first publishing deal. Um, I wouldn't be you know, sitting here doing this that I do for a living if it wasn't for Guy Clark. It must have been an amazing time. And you know, part of it's obviously well is documented in, in the movie Heart Worn Highways, yeah. which... Yeah, well, the, movie, the, the inmates were, were in, in charge of at least part of the asylum when I got there, so it was kind of yeah. interesting. It was, a, it was a good time in Nashville. Yeah, it was it was pretty amazing. Um, and you also went on to, to play in Guy's band there for a period, and yeah, it was just one of those deals. Guy, it took him a long time to to put his first record together. It wasn't out even by the time I got to Nashville. Uh, Rodney Crowell had sort of been the kid in that circle of people till I got there, and then Rod moved to the West Coast to play in Emmy's band which made me the kid, and the, your duties as the kid were to play bass if Guy did decide he wanted to put a band together for something and to talk to Susanna when Guy wasn't talking. And not, he, not when he was mad, he just didn't talk sometimes. And Susanna <laughs> would call you and go, come get me. And uh, so that became my duty rather than Rod's at that point. What do you, what do you appreciate most about Guy's songwriting? Greatest story songwriter that ever lived. You know, they're, they're full-blown, fully developed stories with a beginning and a middle and end and highly, highly developed characters. And he just had a knack for making you feel that and making you see what he saw when he was eight years old. And he knew Jack Prigg, who, you know, sounds like it was his grandfather. It was actually his, it was his grandmother's boyfriend. And um, then, um, you know, or... You know, Texas 1947, where you're seeing, a, he's six years old and you're seeing a train coming. It's a, a very, very highly developed uh, memory for detail and a, and a way of putting that into um, a very short period of time, getting a lot of information out there very, really quickly in a way that people can absorb it. Which, uh, which song of his do you wish you would have written? Oh, God, there's a lot of them. The Last Gunfighter Ballad's way up there. Um, you know, he wrote... Uh -huh. One of the last songs he wrote was a song called My Favorite Picture of You. It was a title track of his last record, and he finally won a Grammy for it. And Susanna passed away before Guy did, which I don't think anybody saw that coming, and I don't think he saw it coming. And, and, um, and it was just basically about the cover of the record is him standing there holding this photograph of Susanna. And I know the whole story. I knew about it from the time I was 19. It, he, she was really, really angry and... and uh, somebody shot a Polaroid of it, and and um, he kept it, and he had it duplicated over the years because Polaroids fade out. And um, it was, um, she was intense, and he was intense. We, you know, I learned to write songs from Guy Guy Clark, and um, and Towns Van Zandt, but Susanna kind of taught us all how to carry ourselves as artists. She was a painter, a really good one, and she wrote really good songs herself. So. That song, it's, it's just so personal, but I think it's also, uh, Willie Nelson just recorded it, and he just recorded two, two Guy Clark songs on his new record, and, and one of them is my favorite picture of you. So that's, that's way on up there. Oh, that's great. I love that song, too. Yeah. I played that a few weeks back. I love that song. Um, how do you decide of all Guy Clark songs, which ones to actually put on the record? Uh, it's, I just finally had to make a decision of, I knew I was going to disappoint somebody, um, you know, like I, I ran into Louis Perez right after, you know, I was at Hardly Strictly right after I recorded the record and Los Lobos pile out of a van and, and Louis sees me from all the way across the staging area and he comes straight over and he says, I heard you made the guy record because he's the, the principal lyricist in Lobos and, and, and big Guy Clark fan. 
And I said, yeah. And he goes, did you record the cape? And I said, no. <laughs> did you record El Coyote? And I said, no. So I corrected part of that. For Record Store Day, I have a seven inch coming with two more tracks, which are solo tracks that I went into Electric Lady and recorded after that confrontation with Louie. And I recorded El Coyote and Don't Let the Sunshine Fool You. So the rest of the record waited towards early stuff because I finally decided that I should do the stuff that I was most emotionally connected to myself because it's my Guy Clark record. Right. And, and um, I wasn't going to be able to please anybody. The difference between Towns and Guy, this was way harder because um, it's like the difference between Kerouac and Ginsburg. Kerouac and Towns were... Not that disciplined to begin with. Um, both, you know, stopped writing at all the last, you know, um, couple of decades of their lives due to, you know, problems they had with, with a lot of things. Uh, and both died young in their early 50s. And uh, Town, I mean, Guy and, and Allen Ginsberg lived 20 years and changed longer and worked until they left the planet and left huge bodies of work. And um, they call these things that artists do disciplines for a reason. And I think, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it, he was, guy was, was, he worked. He got up and he worked at what he did pretty much every day. You seem to have approached those two records a little bit differently too, I think, musically. Like the Towns one, I don't know if you felt freer to more, you know, experiment with the material, like, uh, uh, like for what you did with Lungs on, on the Towns record and various other things. In this record, you seem to be a lot more faithful to the arrangements and all that, would you, you know, say? The arrangements on the Towns record are all pretty much the way I remember him playing the stuff solo. And every track on the record, except for the two bluegrass tracks, mm. were recorded just me and a guitar in a room. And everything mm -hmm. else, including Tom Morello and the drums on Lungs, was added later. Right. So it, they really were, the way they were recorded and the way the tracks came down, recorded almost exactly the same way. I just did... Uh, guy with the band, but it's still um, my version of L.A. Freeway is Guy's version of L.A. Freeway. It's mm -hmm. not Jerry Jeff Walker's. It's, it's based on Guy's, and, and um, even though I heard Jerry Jeff's version first because I didn't know Guy when 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 Jerry Jeff recorded that song, so and his version is great. But I know how to play it. I played bass behind Guy playing it. I, I'm, I had an intimate you know relationship with it. You know, performed that way. So so it, it 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 sounds different because of the final product but but the approach for me as I was performing the songs was really really close to the same thing wow. just as close as I could get to my memory of those guys doing those songs when I was sitting in the same room with them that sounds good well thank you again for coming by you'd like to play a couple more songs sure uh, let's see Steve Earle live here on KEXP Call the 
outside again Like desperados waiting for a train Desperados waiting for a train Back the stains all down his chin To me he's one of the heroes of his country So why is he all dressed up like them old men Drinking beer, playing morning for the two Like desperados waiting for the train Now's grown, he's almost gone. Closed eyes and dreamed us up a kitchen. Sang another verse to that old song. So come on, Jack. Son of a bitch is coming. Desperados waiting for a train. 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 Steve Earl live here on KEXP. So, um, like I said, um, we all learned a lot from Susanna Clark as well. And, um, you know, we kind of, one of the reasons I got married so many times is, is that um, I kind of wanted what they had. And um, they were together until, uh, until Susanna passed away. And, and they made art and supported each other and were each other's biggest fans and biggest, uh, best audiences. And we, you know, there were no places, there was two places to play in Nashville when I got there. And um, so mostly what we did is we got together in Jim McGuire's studio or um, John Lomax's house someplace and sat around and tried to impress each other with whatever we'd written that week. And mainly we were trying to impress Susanna. And, and this is um, a Guy Clark song that I knew before I even knew Guy Clark, and this is for Susanna. Pack up all your dishes. Made a note of all good wishes Say goodbye to the landlord for me Some bitches always bored me Throw out the more L.A. papers Molded box of vanilla wafers Adios to all this concrete Gonna give me some dirt road back street If I can just get off of this L.A. freeway But not getting killed or caught I'll be down the road in a cloud of smoke to some land I ain't my bar bar and it's his you old skinny Dennis Only one I think I will miss I can hear your basement singing Sweet and low like a gift you're bringing Play it for me one more time now Gotta give it all we can now I 
believe every word you say Just you keep on, keep on playing If I can just get off of this L.A. freeway And not get them killed to call I'll be down the road in a cloud of smoke to some land I ain't bought, bought, bought And you put the pink card in the mailbox Leave the key in the old front door lock They will find it likely as not Sure there's something we have forgot Oh Susanna, don't you cry, babe Love's a gift is truly handmade We got something to believe in Don't you think it's time we're leaving If I can just get off of this L.A. freeway Will not get and kill the cow I've been down the road in a cloud of smoke to some land I ain't bow, bow, bow And I just get off of this L.A. freeway Will not get and kill the cow Pack up all your dishes Made a note of all good wishes Say goodbye to the line, love for me Some bitches always bored me FM, KEXP, Steve Earle, live here in the KEXP studios. That great version of uh, one of Guy Clark's greatest songs, L.A. Freeway. Thank you again, Steve, for uh, coming by the station today. That sounded awesome. Thanks. That sounded wonderful. Um, You mentioned also you have another album you're working on. You're going to put out next year? Yeah. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, it's going to be way more political, and I knew that that, that, that I had that record coming in me. A lot of people wondered why... So you want to be an outlaw wasn't more political. And the truth is, I didn't know that this was going to happen when I was writing those songs. But um, don't expect the preaching to the choir record that you've heard from me in the past, because I've done that a couple of times. And, you know, I don't, um, I don't, I haven't changed my mind or my heart about any of that. I'm probably more radical than I've ever been, because that's what fascism does. But um, I think that we're in trouble, and I think that um, what I want to do is try to make a record... Um, that speaks to people that didn't vote the way that I did and didn't have, it didn't have to be that way and didn't have to be the, the next time. Because if you can sit around and think that bad people elected, you know, Donald Trump and that's all there was to it and, and Russians and, you know, those are factors, but, but it's not anywhere close to all of what happened. And, and I think, you know, if we don't find a way to uh, concentrate on what, you know, we have in common with the other, you know, with everybody in this country has in common, which is more than I think that we've been led to believe. And they're very powerful people that are heavily invested in us continuing to believe that. So I want to write, make a record that changes hearts and minds because I really, I still believe music can do that. Well, that sounds very worthwhile. I'm really excited to hear it. You have a title for it yet? It's going it, to, I'm, I'm going back and forth. It's probably going to be called Coal Country because the core of the record is being written for a theater piece that's going up at the Public Theater in New York next year. Jessica Blank and Eric Jensen wrote the book. The songs are mine. It's not really a musical as much as a play with music, and it's about Upper Big Branch, which was a coal mine that blew up in West Virginia. That guy, Don Blankenship, that you saw that could barely string a sentence together that ran for the Senate in West Virginia, and thank God didn't win. Um, He owned that mine, ran it outlaw every minute, and killed every one of those guys a whole shift. And uh, so that's what the core of the record is. Because I think, 
Um, people think everybody in West Virginia is, uh, voted for Donald Trump because everybody's working in coal. And the truth is one in a thousand people, even in the coal communities, have a job in a coal mine. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a problem throughout the country. It's coal country. It's steel country. It's wherever there aren't jobs that, that regular people without a college education can get. And uh, it, the jobs didn't go away from a conspiracy. They didn't go away because unions are bad. They went away because of machines more than anything else. And the difference between us and a lot of other countries in the world is we never did anything to compensate for that. And we've got to try to figure out a way to do it or we are in trouble. Well, again, that record sounds very promising, very looking forward to hearing it. Thank you again for coming by the studio here today. Thank always, you. always happy to have you drop by and very looking forward always to having you come by hard. again. I'd like to thank uh, our awesome film crew of Jim and Alia and Justin and Carlos, our awesome photographer and David for providing hospitality and the great Kevin Suggs for producing this session. You are listening to KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listener-powered KEXP.org.